General James Cartwright uh, has had a distinguished career in the United States Marine Corps, uh, rising to vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He is widely recognized as one of the world's leading experts on cybersecurity and cyber warfare. Uh, it's a very great honor for the Hudson Institute to have General Cartwright speak to us today. With that, General Cartwright. Now, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that the information age, the networks, the Internet is not a fad. I mean, it's here, and, it's, and, it, and it has a significant impact on our economy, on our society, and it has really brought us more to a global society than, a, than an aggregation of, na of nation states. Where that will take us over time and the tensions that will put are, you know, are, are things that your crystal ball is as good as mine to, to figure out. But the reality is it's here. It's, it is difficult to work in the um, cyber sphere, whatever we, we want to call it, um, under the constructs of uh, patent law where you think whatever you invent is good for 20 years and yet you've got Moore's Law sitting out there with 18-month cycles. In this 10 years of war, one thing that we have learned is that, for the most part, many of our fights really don't, don't go on that way. Competitive advantage in these conflicts has not been something that lasts for 20 years. Um, you build an IED, I build a counter, you build a new IED, that's a 30-day cycle. That's about a 30-day cycle. We've got to come up with the counters every 30 days to stay in that fight. The cyber side of this, these fights in Iraq and Afghanistan has been turning in somewhere between 9 and, and 14 days. Um, and, and, and that's a challenging activity when you apply it against laws, rules, acquisition policies, etc., that were really designed to build aircraft carriers or tanks or whatever. It just doesn't fit. The reality here is that we have a very fast turnover. It's an information age. I, my suspicion is that, in context, what you will see the department able to afford and what industry is going to start to afford in, in this activity is going to be those capabilities that are platform agnostic. In other words, it's not the platform anymore. Up until now, our competitive advantage, you find a problem, I go build a platform. Okay. Um, we had to do it a couple of times. Uh, the the uh, mine resistant uh, vehicles, the MRAPs, were an industrial response to a ten dollar problem. Um, we built a million dollar vehicle. Um, it's not where you want to be, but you have to do it sometimes. That vehicle is very disadvantageous from a war fighting standpoint in that it you know it locks you up. It 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 does all of those things, and for about five or ten pounds of explosive, I need to put about three or four thousand pounds of armor on. That's not on the on the side of cost imposing you want to be, um, but it's the reality that we live as with. As cyber has emerged in these conflicts, and we have used it uh, to the benefit of our forces uh, and moved along, uh, I'll walk you kind of through where I came into the story, um, which was as the commander of the United States Strategic Command about nine years ago, um, when the decision was made that we ought to do something with this thing called cyber. And so when that, that usually happens is give it to Mikey, you know, and that happened to be Stratcom. Send it out there. They'll figure out what to do with it. Um, you know, and so a lot of what, um, you know, what I worked my way through was how do you, in fact, organize the department in such a way as to not be so anomalous that nobody knows how to use you. And, and the counter to this was, in particular, where I did not want to be was space. When we put space into the department, we put it in a standalone command. It had its own vocabulary. Nobody knew how to use it. You had to, you know, be behind three or four green doors to even see what was going on. It was a big secret to everybody except, you know, the rest of the world. Um, they all knew we were up there. We just couldn't acknowledge the fact that we were up there, and we couldn't certainly tell our troops that we were up there. Uh, and that we could get competitive advantage from that. So one of the things that, that I took away from that was don't let this new idea go off on its own. Make it be part of what you do day in and day out. Make it be part of the existing training regimen that every private and lance corporal goes through in every service. 